Okay, uh, welcome to the next installment of the Advanced Work Packaging Community of Practice webinar series. Um, today we have uh, Yogesh Srivastava and Nargis of uh, Shazad, and both representing Technobuilt and uh, the Construction Owners Association of Alberta on the topic of mindfulness. Uh, to get us started, we're going to have Lloyd Rankin introduce the session and talk a little bit more about the community, uh, the community, uh, the webinar series, and some upcoming AWP events for the industry. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, just like to welcome everybody here today and thank uh, Yogesh. And uh, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, just uh, go through a little bit on the advanced work packaging community of practice. So uh, could I get the next slide, please? So uh, our vision for the community of practice is to basically create construction that is safer, more effective, and more efficient. And you'll see on this slide the uh, link to the community of practice uh, uh, LinkedIn page. If you have not already joined, we strongly recommend you join because that way you'll know which events are coming up. And uh, also, We've negotiated with CII that uh, COP members will be able to get a discount for events that they uh, uh, put on. The, the next one will be the virtual summit. So uh, please, if you haven't already, join the community of practice. Uh, next slide, please. Oops, uh, back one. The um, mission of the uh, community of practice is really to create an environment where we can share knowledge and encourage discussion. And we are not uh, limited to advanced work packaging. That's our primary focus. But we're also interested in lean and BIM and digital twins and other approaches. So uh, uh, please, if you have some suggestions as to how we can improve productivity, uh, share that with us. Um, also, we sent out a, uh, oh, sorry, next slide. We sent out a member survey and we've gotten some responses back, but we want to have as many of you as possible respond to us because we need to know what you're interested in so that we can program the right information and connect with the right uh, groups. So this member survey is available to you and uh, we'll be sending it out to you uh, after this event. So please, if you haven't already, fill out the survey. And next, uh, we have a virtual summit that's coming up on the 1st and 2nd of September. Uh, this summit normally is only available to uh, Construction Industry Institute members, but we've been able to negotiate um, it being open to all members of the public. So you can see if you're a CII member, it's $175. If you're a COP member, it's $200. And if you're a non-member, it's $225. So there is an additional discount for being a COP member, and it does not require you any payment to become a member. You just sign up. Uh, there also is a registration site and it is currently open. It's at awpconference.com, the CII Summit. It's operational now, so I would check it out. There's going to be five different teams reporting out, and I think quite interesting information for, for people. If you want to improve your supply chain, your commissioning and startup, to get over barriers or to deal with data requirements or increase the visibility of your supply chain through digital threads. And then finally, we have two conferences coming up, one in Houston and one in London. Uh, both of those will have virtual components to them and physical components. And if you have any um, questions uh, directed to us, otherwise, uh, if you go to the conference website, you'll be able to get quite a bit of information from there. I don't want to take up any more time, uh, so uh, Nargis, could you uh, introduce the topic for us? Thank you. 
Sure, thank you, Lloyd. Uh, so the topic today is, uh, well, first of all, good morning, our everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today for this webinar. Uh, my name is Narges, and uh, I am um, actually uh, going to um, be walking you through this uh, webinar today, navigating through turbulent times with mindfulness is the topic. So, um, do I, Yogesh, do we introduce ourselves here at this point? Yeah, please. Uh, it is you first. Okay. So, um, so my name is Narges, and I'm one of the executives of Technobuilt, overseeing strategic global marketing and business development for the past three years. Um, in 2017, we transitioned from Techno Plan to Technobuilt, and prior to that, I worked as the managing partner and director for product management for five years or so. Um, during my tenure, I recognized that there is a huge gap in communications. Um, within the industry and collaboration is often misconstrued for integration of systems and processes. I believe that the true spirit of collaboration is contingent upon human interaction and engagement. And I also believe that people are the driving force and the biggest asset for any organization and uh, should be treated and acknowledged as such. So uh, you see my main focus all along has been incorporating human perspective and uh, fostering soft skills um, and a lot of times soft skills in the workplaces don't get that much weightage, uh, but they are integral for the success of any organization. Um, I'm also a mindfulness coach and consultant and offer services for organizational change, uh, personal and professional development, enhanced safety and productivity through TechnoBuild, as well as my private firm, Enerzul Consulting. I'm also, I don't usually talk about it, but I'm also a certified hypnotherapist, Reiki master teacher, and an NLP coach and trainer. Uh, so this is all about me. Moving on, I will request Yogesh now to introduce himself and share some information. And I'll come back to you in five minutes or so again to help you understand mindfulness, our innovative lean mind approach, and share how it can help you cope through the current times and beyond. So over to you, Yogesh. Hello, everybody. This is Yogesh Srivastav. I'm leading the TechnoBelt uh, company as CEO. But uh, last uh, nine years or so, I've been part of the Construction Owner Association of Alberta as co-chair for the AWP committee. Had the privilege uh, to be part of the research team that originally put together the advanced work packaging method. But as Lloyd alluded to the things in the beginning, that not only AWP, we have to not be caught in our own paradigms. There are other good things also in the industry where people have pioneered lean, last planner, integrated project delivery, and many other methods. I look at uh, what, what can we do to help the world build better, safely, smartly, and sustainably. And with that as a background, I, I certainly take opportunities to delve into different facets of human behavior, technology, as well as uh, the processes that drive the EPC project delivery. So with that uh, mindfulness, uh, we started working on this from last four years or so, and it's been more than three years that we've been presenting at uh, certain forums. And uh, Goa has also taken this on as a mainstream topic going into 2020 and 2021. So you will see more of this uh, coming along. And in today's session, you'll see a culmination of where we are as of date. But uh, certainly, this is a topic uh, which continues to evolve. And industry is taking notice. You will see the reasons why. So just a couple of uh, brief uh, things on the company. Technobuilt is uh, basically the vision is to modernize construction to help the world build better, build anything. We are all about digital AWP to complete construction projects on time and within budget. So you can certainly check us out on that. And our mission is to accelerate the future of our digital built environment. Our flagship product is called PACE, Operating System 4.0. It is an end-to-end -end digital AWP system to bring speed, flow, and productivity control. Construction Owner Association of Alberta has been around for more than 30 years, I believe. And uh, I think uh, the workplace planning activity, which I would say is the genesis for advanced work packaging, 
started with a small study that in fact interestingly Lloyd came to do only for three months or something or a few weeks but uh, there onwards uh, it uh, it started uh, taking some shape and 2003 till 2009 or 10 we were still working on this uh, concept of workplace planning but uh, fair enough, further to that uh, well, collaboration with CIIs began and it did feel that we are doing something important here. So uh, the output was advanced work packaging as a, as a practice in 2013, but deemed as a global best practice in 2015. It was a joint venture between COA and CII. And after that, basically, we have then been following up what more can be done in AWP. So every year, COA has the charter on the AWP committee. We have five major topics, engineering readiness, material readiness, path of construction, and the other two people mindset readiness, where this comes from. This is the current year's initiative, and some of this will move into the next year as well. So of course, this is the agenda, and some things that a lot of this will be taken through by Energis. But uh, after that, what we want you to have a look at uh, from this perspective is, I guess the energies you may want to talk about this or let me explain this. Yeah, you there can... are some workshops and consulting that Nergis specializes in and we deliver this together. Of course, the digital AWP and all that is coming from our background in advanced work packaging. Lean on-site execution and many others are part of this as well. But let's look at the topic of mindfulness before we dump into, uh, before we say that uh, the, the whole idea of getting better has to start with a baseline. So here, we, if you look at the baseline in terms of health, safety, and environment that is always being tackled quite proactively. And in the last two decades, after the DuPont's Bradley curve, there has been a significant reduction in HSE-related incidents. What you are seeing is all the fatalities across falls, electrocution, or any others, when you combine all of them, there were 991 fatalities in 2016. However, in terms of construction workers killing themselves was staggering 5,000 and above. So we are paying so much attention to making sure that we have steel toe boots, we have got gloves, PPE and everything else. But what's going on in our mind? How can we do something better there? Because it is an alarming rate that you are seeing and it is a real problem. So is it that we are chasing too much of productivity, too much of profitability, et cetera, that we drive people to a level where they cannot sustain it anymore and they just give up and give up to the extent that they give up on life? That is not right. Our industry certainly can do better. And this is one important factor that drove us. What can we do while we are chasing productivity in this process and it should not be at the expense of people who are not having a recordable incident, but at the same time, it has to be something which certainly doesn't cause people to run in such an overdrive that they, they don't want to live anymore. That is not right. So as you see, when you compare people, generally when people's minds are not ready or if they've given up in their minds look at where it stands 44000 overall compared to look at where where else what other things basically create a fatality so it murders automobile accidents and other things they are still far low so when you talk about why mindfulness yogesh or nurses I hope you can now see why it is so important. So people are dying and it is just not HSE. There is a lot to do with the state of our mind. And in this pandemic situation, it has exacerbated this and it's not going to be business as usual. 
But interestingly, industry has recognized that mental and social well-being is important. And ISO 45001 uh, in, has introduced worker representation, participation in the safety management with the corporate, as well as mental and social well-being as an important part of HSE. So the industry is moving towards that, but are we doing something about it? So productivity has a direct correlation to the care, to care for the workers and the leaders. So mindfulness is the key. So with that as uh, starting, I would like to hand over to Nargis to take us further in this topic. Thank you, Yogesh. Uh, and yes, uh, mindfulness is the key and I'll go over why. Mindfulness seems to be everywhere today lately. We find it in schools, in universities, in hospitals, in our military academies. We find it in boardrooms and parliament buildings and so on and so forth. For some, it is a means of preventing accidents and mishaps. For many, a therapy. For others, a technique to cope with stress, you know. And for some, it's a lifestyle choice. And tens of millions of people admit to practicing it uh, in North America alone. And according to the American Psychological Association's uh, 2016 Work and Wellbeing Survey, one in three working Americans report being stressed on the job. So workplace stress is costing um, internationally businesses billions of dollars. And that alone should be the reason to include mindfulness practices in our, in our lives. And uh, what we shared so far um, is the pre-pandemic situation. The COVID-19 global crisis has clearly caused a great deal of interruption in both our professional and individual lives. And I'm sure you all agree with me. Uh, the vulnerability, the helplessness, and the measure of pressure now, like never before, has created a, a need more than ever uh, to stay composed, flexible, and empathetic and explore methods to most adequately uh, support ourselves and our teams um, to combat um, these uh, quickly rising new difficulties. Um, um, I'm sure uh, you can all relate with that. Most of us can. The abrupt constrained uh, move to telecommunicating and working uh, from home um, has also opened a plethora of other issues and that probably would require another uh, webinar on its own, uh, causing added stress and anxiety. And, and during the next 30 minutes or so, we'll be investigating how we can utilize mindfulness practices to reinfo reinforce our capacity uh, to lead during these difficult times and beyond. Uh, Yogesh, if you can go to the next slide. So we just showed you the staggering stats about fatalities. The next two slides show the current scenario that the extensive research by McKenzie and company has documented. I just um, did some research the other day and I found these stats. And they have recognized the association of recessions, mass layoffs, and prolonged periods of unemployment with an increase um, in income inequality and devastating impact on health and life expectancy in the United States. Uh, so these effects um, may deepen through the course of COVID-19 pandemic, they're predicting that, which requires us to be more mindful and aware to navigate through these difficult times, um, um, you know. Um, next slide, Yogesh. There are some other stats here. So, yeah, uh, we can move on to the next slide. So the point is that it's, Things are really, really, uh, you know, getting worse by the day. So uh, before we dive into mindfulness, let's look uh, at some interesting facts. Uh, so on an average, there are uh, roughly 70,000 thoughts that uh, we experience uh, during the course of the day as humans. Believe it or not, 80% of them, uh, these thoughts are negative and 98% of them are the same as yesterday. So we are creatures of habits. It's a vicious cycle. If you don't break it, it just keeps on uh, going and going. So we're either ruminating about the past, which causes depression, or worried about the future, which causes, um, uh, you know, anxiety. Both these thought processes uh, create stress. Uh, so when we are in our daily lives, the, the conscious mind is, is really in the present moment. Uh, so with mindfulness, we can lessen that constant chatter and uh, just focus on what is happening right now and how to handle the situation at hand by responding and not reacting. We're basically, uh, you know, really working in error, and I'll, I'll tell you why. It's because of the distractions we have all around us. 
um, it is uh, also difficult to stay focused because of the continuous distractions um, from the technology um, and um, you know, we're, we're, and there's so much going on in the media and social media and whatnot and Harvard Business Review did a study and concluded that we are 47 percent of the times distracted and according to Cindy Gordon, um, she did some kind of uh, research, our attention span has dropped from 20 seconds to 10 seconds now, which is pretty alarming. Focus and concentration is um, extremely important and uh, you can have the best gadgets, uh, the, the methods and the tools and the systems, uh, but if you cannot focus and are not cognitively present, you cannot function properly and be productive. So here, man, just I want to add, we in productivity for construction have a thing called time on tools or hands on tools, that kind of measurement we do. And it is a dismal 3.7 hours. It's been uh, quoted very, very much uh, in extensively in the industry. Out of 10 hours, we get the tool time of 3.7 hours. And if that tool time can in increase by 10% or 15% or 20%, it will make a significant dent in productivity and the costs of the project. Now, of Absolutely. course, we can measure tool time, but what about the mind on the action or mind on the work scope or mind on the activity? That is certainly not measurable as such. But if we can just bring our attention, which I guess here it says it's diminished, to half from where it was just 10 years ago. So if you see, we are 50% less attentive to what's going on. Multitasking and everything else also takes us away. But this cognitive dissonance certainly is an important criteria of why we could not get a better productivity. So one area which is uh, simply obvious to make things better could be that, can we just focus on what we have taken as task to do it gives you better health, safety, and you can get done quicker. Get it right first time. You don't have to do rework. Okay. Just adding to what what uh, this uh, time on tools were says mind on tool, mind on tools, if I may say. Okay. Sure, absolutely. Next slide, please, Yogesh. So, uh, although this isn't a webinar on neuroscience, but I want to highlight three areas of the brain that appear to be influenced by mindfulness practice. It can actually change the shape of the brain. So, research shows that um, the, it affects the gray matter. Prefrontal cortex, or the C of the brain, which is responsible for emotional regulation, planning, and problem solving. It also affects the cortical thickness of hippocampus area, which is responsible for learning and memory. Uh, alternatively, the amygdala, which regulates how we feel stress and fear and anxiety, and it decreases in size by regular meditation. So this area is responsible for fight, uh, flight, or freeze response as well. And uh, generalized uh, neuroimaging meditation studies found that eight weeks of med mindful med meditation uh, can uh, change our brains. It rewires them towards more positive thoughts and emotions, and the science of neuroplasticity now proves it. Um, you can go to the next slide. Thank you, Yogesh. So we went over uh, the current stats of uh, states of affairs and the you know stats and the importance of being mindful. Now let's look into what actually is mindfulness. Um, so the formal definition that I'd lean on uh, to is by John Kabat-Zinn. He defines it as awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. So there are three components uh, to mindfulness. Um, that I like to build upon. Um, think of them as three pillars of uh, which on which mindfulness rests. So the first one uh, of these is intention. And the idea that mindfulness happens on its own is not correct. It, it used to be the case when we were young kids. We were always immersed in the moment, but um, not not unfortunately not uh, at this point uh, of lives that we are. The second is attention. To be mindful means that we are actually uh, being uh, attentive and fully engaged. We're purposefully directing our attention um, in whatever activity we're doing. And finally, the idea of non-judgment. It, it simply means that we are um, moving to accepting and openness. And, and so we are not just present, but there's a, uh, there's a frame of reference. We are being curious, we're accepting and kind into the practice, and we're not judging uh, things as good or bad, but we are in the moment. 
so that is uh, that is mindfulness um, and, and, and it's difficult to explain it I mean usually when we are doing our seminars um, I, I have uh, an exercise that I want people to you know go and experience themselves but this is not uh, feasible right now next slide Yogesh but here I'll also add now just uh, what it, what it also anchors on is to take an observer nature of right. our being that we observe the present moment, observe the things rather than interact with it or uh, or chase it or try to let go of it, etc. It's just simply a pure moment of being the observer that we all are through our own intent to observe simply and let everything including thoughts and the and whatever is visual or sound etc the observer nature is where the current uh, say traditional mindfulness is how it is but as uh, you all you may cover later marriages it is so yeah. hard i mean we, it's not if you did that practice even two minutes to be still and to observe uh, it's so difficult so certainly mindfulness is not an easy thing to do it is hard to to be in an observer mode and that's where i was going to take you but thank you for uh, for sharing this information yogesh yeah so um i don't want to take too much time on the origin of mindfulness but basically there are uh, three main forces that brought it to mainstream it's an ancient buddhist practice the first was the vipassana meditation movement i also um, you know attended this um, retreat and i got some training uh, firsthand it's a silent retreat the second was the vietnamese uh, buddhist monk uh, and he um, has been considered the father of mindfulness it's written over uh, 100 books uh, john kabat zinn who has played arguably or unarguably the biggest role in establishing the scientific credibility of mindfulness in the west so next slide yogesh so um now let's look at the current applications which uh, some of you might have exposed to especially within the hsc realm Mindfulness-based stress reduction, or MBSR, is a mindfulness-based program that uh, was designed by John Kabat-Zinn again at the University of Massachusetts to assist people with pain and range of conditions and life issues. I also offer this course. Uh, the MBSR eight weeks course has been proven to help uh, alleviate stress, anxiety, depression, and uh, chronic pain. Uh, similarly, MBCT, which stands for Mindfulness-Based Cognitive Therapy, uses psychological techniques that help patients uh, better understand the correlation between various modes of the mind and mood or disorders. So these are the general applications. Now let's look at some benefits of mindfulness. Um, there are quite a few of them. I've gone over already some of them, but uh, when it comes to psychology, meditation has been uh, proven to pr prevent and treat anxiety, depression, and stress. Uh, when it comes to health benefits, there are more than 50 proven health benefits of meditation. Some of uh, the most important ones are um, risk of cancer, reduced risk of cancer, heart disease, and stroke, which by the way are the three most uh, top killers. Uh, when it comes to performance, uh, meditation has been proven to improve reactions, memory, cognitive function, and much more. Um, it also helps with our relationships. Um, it's been proven that it increases empathy and compassion. It promotes uh, forgiveness, increases capacity for love, and boosts intimacy. And um, lastly, mood. Meditation makes you happier, more positive person. Studies show that meditation increases job satisfaction the faction uh, and self-actualization and peace of mind and um, uh, being observer it requires uh, you know all these elements to be in place and that's what mindfulness does so moving on to the next slide the here uh, are some um, organizations who have um, benefited from this uh, and i hope that you have a good uh, understanding of what mindfulness is by now uh, but um, if, if there's an interesting story I would like to share about. I don't want to go into too much details, but after uh, a skiing accident that left uh, him with a broken neck, Aetna CEO Mark uh, Bertoloni incorporated yoga and meditation into this wellness routine. He found it so beneficial that he offered sessions of Aetna employees and more than 
13,000 people took him up on it. And the participants reported an average of 28% reduction in stress uh, levels, a 20% improvement in sleep quality, and um, uh, about 19% decrease in, uh, in pain. Um, and uh, the workers also gained an average of about 62 minutes a week of productivity each, which Aetna estimates is uh, worth 3,000 employees uh, each year, um, $3,000 rather. Right. So you see, what? yes, sir. Nargis, as we are listening to you, one important thing that's coming out of it is so far you are covering the traditionally how people understand mindfulness right. seems to get correlated only to meditation. But as you see our industry in construction, especially uh, projects, EPC, et cetera, that's if uh, there isn't, it's not always easy that, okay, if meditation will have to do that and it will take care of it. So I'm I really want I'm looking forward to how absolutely and that's, what, that's how it can be applicable to our industry sure. and for the people who are always busy running around and deadlines and everything else etc. So certainly, but it's good to to hear you how you are explaining this. Right. So let's that's exactly where I'm uh, heading to, Yogesh. Okay. So let's go to the next slide. Move forward. I've just covered that. Please keep moving. So one thing that is evident though, Anarjis, is that uh, it can be across industries. It is not necessary. Intel is a technology, say semiconductor Absolutely. manufacturer. Uh, this one is uh, another kind of industry. It now probably is another medical, I think. So, right, but hmm. workplaces yeah. are similar, Yogesh. And when it comes to our industry, it is, uh, it's actually, you know, it requires more mindfulness um, than any other industry, I would say. Fair enough. Here is your slide. Yeah, so here's another research that uh, that um, actually just backs up what I just shared with you. Um, moving on, Yogesh. So like I mentioned, um, I don't know if I should go over it, but here's the process and uh, basically there are four uh, components to it. Uh, you focus on one thing, um, say your breath, your mind wanders off and uh, you notice uh, it and you, you shift your attention back to that one thing again. Um, and as Yogesh mentioned, it's difficult. It's very difficult when it comes to the construction industry. You can go to the next slide. Um, and Based on what uh, our experience has been so far, uh, like Yogesh mentioned, it's difficult to focus and be the observer for even more, two minutes. Uh, people were not able to do that. I myself, when I first started, I just thought that it's not humanly possible to do that. Your mind wanders off. And this is the case when we're sitting in our offices and our, in our homes. But imagine uh, the situation at the construction site where uh, there is a high momentum of man material and machinery. So you can only imagine how difficult it must be in this scenario to stay focused, present, and mindful when there's, a, when there's all this happening around us, which is precisely why, oh, um, next slide, Yogesh. We pioneered the lean mind mindfulness approach. It is an inside uh, out approach, and there are three components to it. Usually when you think of mindfulness, uh, an image comes to mind where you close your eyes and you draw attention inward. The lean mind is when um, it ascends beyond the self, encompassing time and space into the equation. Mindfulness in construction is about taking personal responsibility of how we think about ourselves, our colleagues and surroundings. Um, here the workers are not taking into account um, just their own shift or trailer or desk or, you know, they're thinking about people who work before them and who will work after their own shift um, is over, as well as the spaces that are working in. Next slide, Yogesh, maybe. So, so nerds here, that it is really important that uh, typically mindfulness, uh, the way so far now we, we were looking at it, it had, we meditate, close our eyes, go inward, observe our breath and put our attention to it and try to get benefit from that, which you already saw. Many companies are reporting how, how good it has been. So many reduction in uh, different areas and improvements in many areas. 
but when we, we there is another aspect of it and this is where i believe as Nargis pointed out that once you have been towards your inner inner self if you can just expand your thought process that it is just not me but also my co-worker my supervisor or my friends the people are me and around me so if i expand myself and start considering as you know in safety they say safety is everybody's responsibility i think can we not extend our thought that making people feel better also is our responsibility if we can just extend a little bit of gratitude courtesy thankfulness etc to not only people just uh, who are known to us but around us that is where the first aspect comes to practice the lean mind approach to expand yourself beyond the inner self and see yourself in others and help them if you treat others in customer service they talk about treat others the way you'd like to be treated right so that's the first uh, co very cognitive aspect that am i doing a good job how uh, how am i with my colleagues second is the spatial expansion which is just beyond my desk or my work area uh, if i keep my desk clean and everything's neat and tidy but everything around that is not organized i think being systematic and helping not only my area but my nearby area in a very simple example during winters in calgary people talk about so if you can be a, a good neighbor you can clear the snow of your own uh, walkway but you can also extend a little bit and do it for your neighbors i'm sure it will create a positive vibe so the spatial expansion it's just not my house my desk my area etc but also look at it a bit beyond our own desk and help that will be phenomenal and the time was also that if it, this was mainly it's just not my shift but i will hand over to the next crew that is coming in here what can I do to clean up or make things systematic, wind up properly, don't leave a mess behind for the other guys to do stuff? I know that daily in our homes also as mothers and uh, fathers, we, when we do some work and our children, uh, or if they do something, we look after it and want them to tidy up the desk or tidy up the kitchen, et cetera, before they move on to do something else. So it's very easy to open the work fronts and leave it in a mess and just do your job without considering who else will come behind us so the three aspects of expansion of self space uh, expansion around the spatial aspect and across time these are the three important criteria which we believe can start creating the same effect of what you would sit down and do 10 minutes of meditation i think the same circuits in the nerves will get formed when you feel happy and elated when somebody says thank you to you so very important that uh, it three simple things if we can start incorporating but there is a structured program along with measurements benchmarking and everything else that we reward using some tools and techniques uh, suggested by harvard business review and some other universities so that we are not covering today but just wanted to illustrate to you the main concept behind bringing this to the industry which may not have the time to sit and meditate but nothing nothing better than at least paying two minutes of attention in your safety moment etc so next uh, now just back to you yes Yogesh, thank you for elaborating on it and that's where i was heading with this uh, next slide You've already explained that uh, when an individual starts thinking beyond himself or herself, how their job might impact others and the people in the next shift, it will generate greater good, enhance safety, and increase productivity. And human beings are social animals. We're prone to be uh, collective beings and inherently tend to follow and reciprocate. So if one individual practices mindfulness, chances are others will follow. Uh, an expansion in time enables learnability and makes us uh, mindful of time and shifts, obviously. Um, and you've covered all this already in a very succinct way, so I don't want to go over it again. Um, based on this three-pronged approach, here is what mindfulness and construction looks like. Yogesh, if you want to go to the next slide. Uh, the definition that we came up with. 
It's a perpetual state of mind that focuses on the present moment while performing work extending beyond one's own self shift and the job site. And this is where uh, we modified the traditional mindfulness and we think that it is it is more uh, it resonates more with the construction world uh, with this kind of model of mindfulness um, there would be improved uh, apprenticeship and mentoring um, there would be better ways of efficient handover and there will be uh, job sites will be more orderly uh, by this uh, uh, you know idea that we're bringing forth and um, yeah, this is exactly where we're heading with. This is what we meant by modifying the traditional mindfulness and making it more suitable for the construction industry now. Yogesh, do you have any, anything to say about it? Or we can move to the next slide. I'm trying to sure. be cognizant of the time. I think uh, there's just one important thing. Uh, I don't know if, it, uh, if uh, we are covering later, but uh, yeah, I think you're covering later. Let's, uh, let's keep yeah, moving. Sure. So this new definition of construction mindfulness directly aligns, as you can see, with Bill uh, 30, ISO 45001, and um, that this bill came into effect in June uh, on in, in, on June 30th, 2018, I believe. It stresses upon not only the physical safety of workers but the emotional and social well-being um, is also equally important. Um, you can go to the next slide, Yogesh, and uh, here's another important um, resource over there. Quickly mentioned. So while legislation is asking to do this, as you can see, it's an act to protect the health and well-being of working Albertans. Bill 30 was introduced here, but last year or so, somewhere early last year, ISO 45001, which basically took what OSHA was talking about, OSHA 8000 or something, that had that, it's an upgraded version of that, and it's yeah. all merging into this. I believe that... Uh, the overall industry and regulations are taking notice of this important aspect of our well-being, if I may say. So HSE, Health, Safety and Environment, we have done quite a bit and come far in that area. Although when you look at the world as a whole, there is still a lot that needs to be done in many developing nations and others. I was talking to a scaffolding company uh, how they handle things in North America and what is the trend still in access, egress, etc. in projects that are being done in some developing nations, so, certain times PPE in hot uh, climates, how P there is not a lot of awareness. So there's lots to be still done in HSE, but at the same time, I believe there is no more time to lose so that uh, people are made aware of how mental and social well-being plays into the day-to-day -day work and productivity. Yes, Narjis. Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I think I put myself on mute by accident. And here is another reputable resource to support uh, its importance as you wish went over when it comes to psychological well-being and productivity. And according to this research published in February 2018 in Frontiers in Psychology, a workplace mindfulness intervention may be associated with improved psychological well-being and productivity, uh, which is not mandatory. A preliminary field study uh, in a company setting substantiated that. And coming from a psychological background, I cannot stress more upon uh, the fact that creative, creativity, productivity, um, they're both contingent upon um, emotional well-being. So if we are in the survival mode and stressed, we can be creative despite all the you know knowledge and credentials and qualifications. So at this point, I think uh, we have substantiated. Huh. And the significance of mindfulness and um, in our daily uh, domestic and professional lives. Another question is how can we adopt mindfulness practice in our organizations and workplaces? We, and again, there's a great quotation here by Aristotle we are what we repeatedly do, excellence that is not an act but a habit. And a mindfulness can be acquired as a habit. It's difficult, though it's not easy, but just like any other habit, it is doable. So um, how do we do that? Like I said, the question is, it's a big question. And just like all other habits, uh, you know, it has to 
be adopted mindfully. It can uh, make us more focused, resilient, and attentive. And, uh, and that's where I think the leadership has to uh, come into the picture. Um, it is possible when the leadership uh, proactively embraces these practices, when leaders are mindful, um, they are uh, you know, destined to become more focused, resilient, reflective, uh, thoughtful and compassionate, value-centric, obviously. Okay, uh, chances are that uh, when people are mindful, they can focus uh, on making decisions that are reflective, like I said, and uh, they're thoughtful and they are not just uh, making decisions abruptly. I mean, they're, they're really, you know, taking their time to think through. And they will take into consideration uh, legal, regulatory, and financial risks uh, in a much more uh, effective manner. The next slide also enhances or talks about the, this some more. For the uh, moment, yeah, go, are just what is important is next time as leaders or who are project directors, project leadership, or company leadership, they are coming out with a new communication or some decision either adding more people, letting go many people. I, I do want to stress that when we start, uh, say, yeah. on the practice of applying mindfulness, there is a set of framework that uh, comes along that when they are making some important decisions or outcomes or meeting notes, they, it does screen through a, certain, a few criteria that have they applied the mindfulness, mindfulness parameters to what is going to be going out as a decision or some kind of a note or a communication and has there been that mindful element uh, has it passed that criteria only then it goes through this framework and uh, gets out there so it is a conscious decision that the leaders start applying as they as they start conducting their businesses their monthly meetings or bi-weekly meetings etc and what the outcomes of those so just wanted to emphasize that. Absolutely. Yeah. So you already covered that. I mean, this is something that uh, has to be done consciously and uh, with awareness. And it is doable. You can go to the Any next slide. Any you want to share on this, uh, Nurgis? Yeah, I mean, I think this is this is very important. It is important to uh, make not to be impetuous and not to be, uh, you know, um, really be, you know, emotional when it comes to things. It's emotional regulation. I think is a very important uh, aspect when it comes to leading, and it's important for uh, the team workers and leaders equally. Uh, to be aware of what they're doing, where they are, how it's going to impact other people, not only themselves. And I think when we're aware and we're more conscious about what we're doing and how we're doing things, um, this is it makes things much better. Certainly, the purpose comes into picture as to why you are uh, working in this company or why we are leading, where we are leading this company. The purpose is important, the why. And of course, looking at it's just not the, your enterprise, but it is also the impact to the industry, society, and the world at large. If that is that is something which we consider, so sometimes a little extra pain or hanging on there or keeping the lights on may end up uh, leading us to a level. Sometimes it is not the logical decision, but at, yet it could be a mindful decision. Right, so the sense of purpose and coherence is absolutely important. Okay, now um, the next four slides talk about some of the opportunities and resources that our company provides when it comes to adopting it organizationally. We have created some tools and methodologies that can help you and your organization on many levels. Yogesh covered some of them before. Uh, I've observed that there's a safety moment in the uh, industry. We, we start all our mo meetings with that. And uh, just like uh, we have safety moments, I suggest incorporating mindfulness moments along with uh, toolbox topics in daily morning meetings. And that doesn't require a lot of time, only two to three minutes of practice at site. Um, I have a sample model for that. Um, it can really set us off for the, for the best day possible. 
um, and it is based on traditional mindfulness concepts along with what we just shared with you. It's uh, similar to FLHA, but it's looking for beyond the self. It's those three components that we talked about, the space and, you know, um, other people, and it's going, it's an inside out approach, which really encompasses all the factors that we covered. Um, yeah, so it's built about, you know, minimizing waste and basically all the benefits that uh, you can imagine in a workplace, especially in the construction uh, environment, um, it uh, is doable through one of these programs. Um, next slide is about uh, our uh, intensive program, which is which offers a 90-minute program for orientation. It also includes uh, personality assessment and uh, sample practices, uh, rather simple practices for personal and social well-being. Okay, thank you. And uh, so we also offer a customized plan for personal practice for for 15 to 30 minutes, uh, where we incorporate traditional and construction mindfulness that benefit general well-being, minimizing waste and productivity, etc. So the program can be um, either integrated uh, with your existing HSC safety protocols and procedures. Uh, the lean mind is the concept that any organization can benefit. Um, that completely aligns with um, pa package-based execution um, as well. So we just covered that. So, um, and as I mentioned here, are some tips that are leaving uh, uh, that we are leaving with you to be mindful apart from the mindfulness breathing technique that I shared, uh, which you can you know exercise at any time. So the point is that, uh, and here you you can here are some tips for you. This this stop uh, acronym is actually a very important, uh, or you can use it at any time. You when you when you think that you're getting stressed out or stressed out or you're being anxious, um, you can remind yourself to stop, take a breath, observe, um, and then proceed. And when you accept yourself, um, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I just was finishing the thought. So there, there are quite a few things you can uh, utilize all these uh, tips and I can share some more references later on with you as well uh, after the webinar is over. But here are some things for you to take with you and, um, and use them. Um, so if you want productivity, the tools, the checklists and the systems will only assist. They're not the drivers themselves. Mindfulness is the key, and uh, I hope you all uh, agree with me at this point somewhat. So we do have the knowledge. We have all kinds of systems. We have all kinds of uh, processes and, and um, you know, um, all these um, wonderful advanced technology. We have skilled workers. We have all the training available for them. But what is lacking is the desire here. And that is where mindfulness is needed. That's where we can bring in um, our conscious awareness and we can cultivate this habit, which can benefit um, not only uh, you know, us in, in our personal lives, but uh, in our organizations as well. So it is almost the end of the you know, presentation here. And um, so I will leave you with this uh, quote that I really like. Uh, sometimes the most important thing in a whole day is the rest we take between two deep breaths or the turning in words in prayer for five short minutes. So I thank you once again for joining us today. Uh, we will be happy to answer any questions or clarify any concerns you might have. Yogesh, over to you. Yeah, sure. I think, Steve, if you can open up uh, the question session. We don't see any question coming for some reason. Okay. So, yes, thanks uh, Thanks so much for the presentation, Narjis and, and Yogesh. Um, we do have the opportunity now for Q&A. And uh, for those uh, attendees uh, that do have questions or comments, please, uh, I encourage you to send them through the questions panel. Um, there is also the chat feature uh, that you can use, but um, I will make, I, I believe it's just a setting on my side, Yogesh, so I will make you and Nargis organizers. Oh. And then I think, I think that that will help you see all of the content here. So let me know if that's helped. Has that opened up the questions for you? Uh, I don't know. See. While you're just looking for that, uh, we have a comment from Shiv. Uh, would like to thank you, Geshe and Arjus, for a beautiful insight. Uh, Abhishek 
uh, we do uh, has said that we do not get the survey on our emails. Where can we access it? Uh, so, anyone curious about the survey, we will send it out along with the replay to today's webinar. So watch for that in your inbox. So you've already registered. Uh, so um, we know how to contact you. So no further action by you is required. We'll just send you the link uh, directly. Um, so I'm, I'm curious uh, among the attendees, uh, who here? has experience in mindfulness practice and or has uh, has seen an impact uh, uh, from mindfulness uh, in in industry or in their organizations it was it was um, you know uh, demonstrated by Nargis that this is something that is uh, having an impact and it is um, becoming more uh, more known and, and definitely recommended as sort of part of the boardroom strategy so just wondering if that if others have been seeing this um, now of course, uh, Bob, you mentioned excellent presentation and very timely, definitely timely, given the amount of um, you know stress and pressure and uncertainty that we're all going through. So just curious if, if attendees have any uh, additional thoughts or questions on that. Um, Nargis, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about how uh, you got involved in, in mindfulness and your interest in the area and, and how you uh, started to transfer that into the corporate, into your corporate world and and uh, helping others make changes personally and professionally. Sure. Thank you, Steve. I would be more than happy to do that. Uh, so my journey with mindfulness began uh, in 2014. I was introduced to this Vipassana meditation retreat where I went for 12 days for a silent retreat. And I think um, it has immensely uh, helped me uh, coping with the ebbs and flows of life, both professional and uh, personal. I lost my mom uh, right after that uh, retreat I came back from. Uh, shortly after that, I lost last of my three brothers. And had it not been for mindfulness, I don't think I would have uh, I would have uh, coped with anxiety and stress and depression that followed those incidents. So personally, it has helped me a lot. Uh, I think it's uh, I've been practicing it. I've been coaching and teaching it. I've been um, doing it. Uh, the, you know, presenting the co-op presentations for the past uh, three years with Yogesh as well. And uh, I think the benefits are innumerable, as uh, we have substantiated. Um, it, it is a, a very important skill that we all need, especially in today's world. And if you look around, most of the organizations, people, celebrities, anybody who has ever done anything significant in life, I think they have taken these moments to really pause and just think and be in the present moment and, and just quiet in their mind and just go within. And, and this is where we need to know exactly where we are in order to you know, proceed and, and progress with life. It's important to realize, you know, and be aware of what life is and how we want to take it along. We co-create our lives, right? So this is this is an important skill and I cannot stress more upon uh, cultivating it. Yeah. I can add yeah, to that. Uh, you know, Steve, one thing sometimes I've also faced is so many, a few years back, it was what I call the Pygmalion effect. You feel so small and insignificant in the whole grand scheme of things. There are so many big mm -hmm. businesses out there. There are so many people who have done some big stuff, etc. And suddenly it kind of makes you think, can you really work with this thought of helping the world build better? Can I do anything about it? You start feeling very insignificant in the whole thing. But through this process and by connecting with your own self and through that seeing everybody as an extension of you, that Pygmalion effect basically starts disappearing on you. At least this is what I felt. And the belief in my own uh, say, mission of what we think we set out to do became so much stronger and that's helped me personally overcome so many disappointments, so many difficult situations. And I anchor around this only. Absolutely, yeah, as, as I was, listening to the the first part of the presentation i was thinking that you know it, it almost was um a very a sort, sort of a long but pertinent safety moment about the personal aspects of you know helping to to cope with all of the inputs and distractions and, and noise that we have every day as well as just the the, the challenges of our our professions and uh, but but as the presentation went on I, I see a lot of the potential benefits to applying these uh, these teachings and these concepts and um, complex team environments and organizational structures and um you know it um 
I think others here are, are wondering the same. Uh, Luigi actually had a question. Have you worked out these practices to build a collaborative environment in a complex structured project organization? Uh, and then he uh, gives an example, owner EPC, contractor, construction contractor, third parties. So um, ha have you had much uh, experience in, in, uh, in seeing how these effects can be uh, can be um, applied in a big organization like that? Yes, sir, Luigi, this is a great question. And the exciting thing is here that over these few years, we have developed a framework in where we basically can benchmark and as well as put a chart course to correct it where you can put together what is the organizational mindfulness leadership and the new recruit who are, whom you're getting or at the site or in your engineering team and how you can assess that and put it together so that it can progress to get a greater collaborative environment or and a much more cohesive workforce to become highly productive, giving deliverables right first time. So that culture change is a very important part of this. And as part of our own AWP experience, it is not about having the knowledge only, it's the change that a company's implementation of something which we have been doing the same way last 20, 30 years. So yes, we have worked on these practices to, to foster a collaborative environment. And uh, there are some things which we have put in motion also. Narjis, you want to add to that uh, benchmark and the HDR uh, are uh, based uh, frameworks that we have created? Yes, we have created a framework, and I think it is also important for uh, for a, a, a complete system that we have created for HSC also that uh, really fits in really well with uh, the framework that Yogesh mentioned. Uh, and it is based on, um, we have done some extensive research, the checklists and the surveys, and we have incorporated all this uh, information, invaluable information rather, uh, within our, 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 our system. And we have created a model uh, that we can um, show you guys and present, you know, maybe share it with you after think, the webinar. Yeah, for sure. And uh, in safety, I think we have all been doing this goal zero. I, the zero has been around for almost uh, as when DuPont came, zero hurt, nobody gets hurt, nobody gets injured, everybody goes home safe, etc. I think zero has been around for long. Talk but about the plus one. Put yeah. this together is to the next level of what is the plus one approach, the proactive approach of not only people not getting hurt, because I can show you this is where I got hurt, but I got hurt here in my mind, in my heart. So thing is, these are such soft questions and with the type A type of people largely dominating the construction business, we, we don't want to acknowledge that we got hurt, okay? But that hurt was somewhere else. Okay? But to and Bob's then, question, uh, do you have a recommendation for these demographic, and there are a lot of people out of work now, super stressful, do you have recommendation for these demographic in need? Certain, uh, Narjis, you want to answer that? Uh, sure, we can uh, share some information um, down the line with you. But then, yeah, yeah, it's 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 really like I said before. It's more than ever. The need is uh, is imminent now more than ever, and uh, it the, our world has completely changed uh, lately. You know, it's not the same as we were practicing things before. So it's it's very important. And uh, along with uh, other things, there are lo lots of, because we're so stressed out, there, there are a lot of, you know, racial injustice going on around here. The people who are not compassionate, uh, there are all kinds of things that uh, really need to be addressed. And uh, we have, when it comes to demographics, I have done some research when it comes to the United States. I moved back from, uh, uh, you know, Canada about three years ago. Uh, but um, yes, we have stats that we I'll be more than happy to share with you. Um, I don't have it handy, you know, available right now. I don't want to misrepresent. But yes, there there, there are proven, uh, you know, um, strategies and things that uh, can be shared. I'll be more than happy to provide you these references. So do connect with Bob now, just. I will for sure. Back to you, Steve. Okay. Thanks so much. Yeah, so we are out of time. Uh, we've gone a little bit over the hour, but uh, I think that's great. It speaks to the quality of the topic and the amount of information that's available. Um, I was going to suggest maybe uh, Narjis and Yugesh could also provide us with some uh, 
pointers as to where we can go to learn more about this uh, concept and uh, we can add that in the email that we'll send out to all the attendees with the recording and the survey afterwards. Um, Lloyd uh, Rankin has uh, sent his regrets. He did have to leave a little bit early before the end of the presentation, but he says thank you very much again to Nargis and Yogesh. It's always a pleasure to work with you on on the webinars and, and anything else, uh, really. Um, and uh, we're grateful for you taking the time to do this today. And um, we hope that uh, we will be able to host you again soon for another another webinar or another presentation. So thanks to everybody. Um, any closing comments uh, by Nargis or Yogesh before we uh, end the session? I, I would say free your mind from the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and thank you for this opportunity, Steve. We'll be more than happy to join you later on for uh, other more, you know, uh, similar topics. Maybe it's a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Very it's good. A pleasure yeah, with you guys. Thank you again. Absolutely. Yeah, we've we've had mindfulness topics at uh, past conferences, and um, it, it did seem to be well received. So um, yeah, yes. it's, it's very interesting stuff. So um, okay, thanks to all who registered. Um, let you get back to your day now. And uh, we'll see you hopefully next week for our next session. Watch for the email with information about that. Thanks a lot. Have a great Be day. Be mindful, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much once again. Bye now. Bye.